We begin the news at this hour in West Africa, where President Bola Tinumbu has announced the immediate reopening of Niger's land and air borders with the Republic of Niger, along with the lifting of other sanctions imposed on the country. The decision follows the directives of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, made during an extraordinary summit held in Abuja on February 24, 2024. At the summit, ECOWAS leaders collectively agreed to lift economic sanctions against several West African nations, including the Republic of Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea. Additionally, President Tinumbu also authorized the lifting of financial and economic sanctions against the Republic of Guinea, signaling a broader effort towards regional cooperation and normalization of relations. The decision is expected to foster improved diplomatic ties and facilitate economic activities between Nigeria and its neighboring countries, promoting stability and prosperity in the West African region. And now to discuss this with me, I am joined by a public affairs analyst, Francis Chilaka. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Francis Chilaka, for joining us on the news. Thank you very much for having me. Now, with the reopening of Niger's land and air borders with uh, Niger Republic and the lifting of other sanctions, it's been said that ECOWAS eventually had to eat the humble pie, even as the measures did not have any impact nor force Niger to back down. So what do you think of this assertion? Well, it simply shows you that um, um, the countries that make up ECOWAS have not benefited from it. Um, ECOWAS really has nothing to offer for its member states, because um, if you if you look at the whole thing that played out, you also find out that there's a lot of corrupt leaders within the uh, ECOWAS itself, and ECOWAS is not doing something about it. So, yes, um, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, they've moved on, and, uh, and I give kudos to them. So opening the borders is just uh, medicine after death. I mean, that's the way I see it. Uh, you said um, they've moved on, and you seem to have thrown your weight behind that. But then we see that um, the receding of the decision is um, considered, well, for some people, a little too late, though some people have actually commended it. Now, we see a Niger that has gone on to form a confederation with Burkina Faso and Mali. Don't you think it might just be expedient or wise at this point for Niger to, of course, alongside these other countries, consider their stance and come back home? When you say come back home, what 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 are they? What is there for them to benefit? I mean, we should ask ourselves in Africa, what uh, what has ECOWAS really done for its uh, um, member states? What has it done? I mean, we look at ECOWAS. We don't even have a uh, a unified currency to start with. You know, we don't have anything that binds us together, other than the fact that okay, you know, borders open and borders close, but. If you look at the border you've opened in, with Niger, what, what, what does Nigeria start to benefit? The import mm. of, um, I mean, the export of Nigeria to, to Niger is, um, is almost like 6%, 5, 7, 6, 7%. That's what we do. But for them, they are, they, they are doing close to 16, 16 to 8, 20%. So who, who, is, who is benefiting more? Mm. So closing the border in the first place and putting sanctions was too much. Well, they did it so much in a hurry. They didn't consult and all of that. So um, I, I believe that it's time the African countries begin to think Africa, more of Africa, more of leadership in Africa, more of getting things done the African way. We need to, we need to, we need to open our eyes to that. And I, and I believe that that's what um, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali uh, trying to do. Well, you seem to have given hard knocks um, on the regional bloc, but then in a center climb, looking at the magnitude and the influence such um, a bloc should have in West Africa, what are the things uh, you believe or you think should um, form the basis of the regional bloc? What are your expectations that you feel they have not met? We are looking at uh, a, a regional bloc that should, you know, manage the economic stance or position or potential of this region, but we've not seen that. Even these countries have accused the regional bloc of not protecting its interest politically and, and in other ways. What is missing looking at ECOWAS as a body? The first thing that is missing in ECOWAS is um, leadership. 
um, they don't have the right kind of leadership. They have um, a lot of member states there whose presidents have decided to stay for life. You know, I think that when you talk about economic, you should also talk about the politics. There should be clear political lines for members. I mean, if, if, if election in a member state is considered to be uh, fraught with um, violence and all of that, ECOWAS should stand its ground to tell the, the, the country that is involved to do the right thing. If you are a president and you spent, if your constitution says four years, eight years, you do not have a right as a member state to um, look into your constitution to make it open for you to recontest. You know, so these are things that ECOWAS should look at. And ECOWAS should look more of the African way of doing things. You know, how do they uh, help African nations to survive, you know, in terms of insecurity, uh, in terms of food and all of that. So ECOWAS has a lot to do. And ECOWAS is not really doing anything. It's just there on paper. You know, we just hear ECOWAS, ECOWAS. But what are the states, what are the countries making up ECOWAS? What will they say that they are benefiting? Mm. So I think everyone is looking at, right now, everybody is looking at what do I stand to benefit, you know, in a body like ECOWAS. And I don't, I believe that they don't see anything they are benefiting. And that's why they call the bluff when they impose all the sanctions and all of that. So, mm. you know, it's neither here nor there for ECOWAS. All right. Uh, okay, so for these countries now ruled by military junta's, uh, what do you suggest um, engagements might or should be with the bloc from this point? Is it the acceptance of military coup leaders legitimizing the regime or probably a room for further negotiations uh, to establishing democratic systems and strengthening uh, diplomatic ties? Well, everybody knows that um, the military junta's will definitely call for elections when they believe that they have achieved the reason why uh, they took over government in the first place. You know, they will do that. But I mean, if you look at it again, um, it's, it's, it simply shows that ECOWAS has accepted them. Uh, whether you're going to negotiate for that with them, that is immaterial. But the main thing is that you have accepted them. They are military rulers. They will attend your meetings. They will listen to, you know, they will do whatever they're supposed to do. So it's yes, it's acceptance in one way. Uh, it's also another way for them to open up negotiations. But you cannot force a country to decide how they want to rule their people. You know, it, 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 it's, it's not proper. You do not do that. You know, so I think that is the message they are also passing. Yeah, if their people are happy with having military leaders, who is ECOWAS to to come and uh, start uh, dictating to them who they who should rule them? Mm. After all, they have not been dictating to ECOWAS uh, member state presidents who have, in so many ways, acted even more dictatorial. Than the military junctures. All right, uh, Francis Chilaka, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. You're welcome, thank you.